Yeah, that's pretty stupid. <laughs> All right, guys, today we're talking about the one survival knife that you need in 2023. Now, I have to say, admittedly, I've kind of been out of the survival game for a little while, intentionally focusing more on everyday carry, as you guys have probably noticed with the channel. But I will say I haven't really noticed a lot of innovation or, you know, like new cool um, survival blades coming out this year. I will say Rat or Ontario Knife Company's Rat line has uh, received like a... Uh, an upgrade to the steel or at least a choice to upgrade to the steel um, of CPM S35VN so that's actually pretty darn cool. The only thing I really dislike is the ergonomics of the rat knives is really really not great um, unfortunately. However um, today I wanted to talk about the SE6 and why I think that this is probably one of the best survival knives you guys can get this year. Now, undoubtedly, you guys will probably know if you follow the channel at all, you know that I definitely have a strong love affair for my Chris Reeve Knives Pacific. And unfortunately, the Pacific, whether it's in 4V or S35VN, is not a very attainable knife for most people. And that's actually one of the reasons why, you know, I get like comments of like, oh, this must not be a very good survival knife because no other survivalists are talking about it. And it's like actually just because they probably can't get one. Like they're incredibly rare and expensive so not many people are willing to either a spend $550 on one or b get on a two-year waiting list for one so honestly that's the reason you don't see more YouTube survivalists like Cole Cracker or Dave Canterbury or really any of them running around with that knife is because it's far too rare for them to really get their hands on and that's not me trying to like say I'm better than them it's just that you know that's the way the um tables are that's the way the dice have fallen i guess you could say so anyways back to this knife i'm not talking about the chris reeve knife specific anymore this is the se6 like i said this one is in 1095 this one's reasonably plain jane now i will say i have done a few modifications the biggest modifications that i've made to the knife are that i set back the angle of the bevel so it's now it used to be like a 20 degree per side angle it's now a 17 degree per side angle and that may seem weird for some people but the primary reason i felt comfortable doing that is the differential heat treated 1095 that SC uses and that Rowan heat treats is that it's very capable it's very malleable at the edge it's not it's hard but not super hard it's I want to say around 56 HRC so it shouldn't it shouldn't really be too prone to like cracking, breaking, or chipping. And so that's why I felt comfortable laying it back a little bit more. In addition to the nice thing about having that thin edge paired with the full flat grind is that it's going to slice and slice and slice. And even more so, even as the edge begins to dull, if you have a very thin thin edge or very thin uh, material behind your cutting edge it's going to continue to slice even as that edge gets more dull so that's kind of my reasoning or philosophy for changing it up it does in my opinion look a little bit dorky because you guys can see that it has quite a wide bevel but it is very practical and very functional the only other thing i did was i took a dremel sanded off the uh, portion of the spine that was coated with that like truck bed liner and then I blued it and I also brought it down to a 90 degree angle so you can strike ferro rods but also the bluing should help not make the knife rust too badly so anyways those are the few modifications I did to the actual blade I only really did one modification so you guys can kind of see crudely um, I just put some uh, loops some belt loops on the back of this so I can wear this thing scout style so this is meant to be worn like on the small of your back scout style and uh, yeah it works perfectly fine in that regard and that's actually a preferred way I like to carry knives so anyways uh, that is the sheath briefly but overall I think what makes the SE6 super super great for survivalists especially people beginning or if you've already began you know like practicing survival you just want something that's very uh, like well contoured, well thought out, well executed as far as the knife design goes. The SE6 is super hard to go wrong with because it's just a perfect size. Like it is 
not too large so it can do a lot of smaller tasks and it's not going to do those tasks super super well but you can choke up like i've been holding this knife most of the time and get your finger right on that edge so if you're trying to do things like feather stick or you know uh, like notch and carve with great detail you can still have your finger right there for a high degree of controllability but also at the same time too you can back off and even back off to you know like the mid portion of the handle and get some good chopping leverage now once again i'm not a strong proponent to chopping with knives because you know chopping with a knife especially a full flat grind knife is never going to be as good as using a hatchet or an axe so definitely keep that in mind but it is going to work in a pinch especially if what you're trying to cut through is like lighter like wrist thick trees and especially if you can compress them like if you can put your body weight on the tree to give the fibers or put the fibers into a degree of tension then you can use this to chop more easily and it will chop through those tensed fibers uh, a lot easier than you just like swinging recklessly at a tree. Um, once again, not necessarily saying you need to go deforest the world with this knife, but it can work in a pinch if you need to build a shelter very quickly or expediently. In addition, uh, one thing that I think is very easy to overlook with the SE6, and my favorite part, is the ergonomics. Not only are the ergonomics, like they look a little bit weird when you look at the knife, but it's super, super hand filling. The thickness of the micarta scales is there. They have really tapered off and rounded the micarta scales so there is like not a hot spot on these knives at all super comfortable whether you're choked up choked back or just in a normal position like there are no hot spots on it and uh, the se like six it's just super super refined and simple but it's just so comfortable to handle so Anyways, the ergonomics, they make sense in any type of position that you find yourself in the handles are very comfortable. And because it is a pretty natural or raw micarta, it's pretty grippy. It's not polished and uh, yeah, it feels good definitely in the hand. And the cool thing about micarta is if you do get this wet, it, that micarta is going to soak up the moisture. So the handle will still be wet, but it will be tacky and grippy. It's not gonna be like rubber per se, but it will be pretty darn good. So I do like that part about at least the micarta versions. The G10 versions are different because G10 is non-permeable. So if it gets wet, it will get slick, but the micarta versions of this blade work perfectly fine. Other things that I haven't done, some people have done, is take off the jimping on the back. I really haven't found a need to because the jimping isn't super, super aggressive. And most of the time, to be completely honest, like when I'm using this knife, uh, when I put my thumb up on the back of a knife, it's usually during carving. And if I'm going to be carving with this knife, I'm going to choke up. And if I choke up, my natural hand position is just right here. So my thumb actually overrides the jimping anyways. So I don't really mind it. It's not a huge deal for me. Um, I, I can like live with or without the jimping. Now I will say there were previous knives that I owned like the SE Azula. The SE Azula, I did take the jimping off of because it was obtrusive. It was uh, definitely noticeable and it impeded my way uh, or my ability to comfortably like carve for extended durations. So not to say that you couldn't remove these. I'm sure if you sat there on these jimpings for a prolonged period and like we're carving on a stick, these would probably become a hot spot and you'd probably want to uh, grind them down or completely off. So anyways, that is kind of my experience with the SC6, why I think it is a really excellent survival knife. I am still kind of like, I find it funny that it took me so long to get an SC6 because I've only had one since, like I got this one I think last year. So I haven't had one for a terribly long time. I've certainly had things like my Chris Reeve knives Pacific, my Falcon even A1 uh, and other survival knives for a longer period of time. But the SC6 is really cool. It is super, super well thought out. And as I've said about many SEs, including the SEs I still own. Um, you know, the best thing about SE is the fact that the people that make these knives also train people for search and rescue, survival, and just outdoor like wilderness self-reliance. So whenever you're buying SE knives, you're buying them from people who understand search and rescue, understand the priorities of wilderness survival. And that's pretty much why just about any SC knife that is made by like the core SC group is going to work really well outdoors because they were made by people who 
live outdoors who operated and used other knives founding or finding that they were like not good not usable and made their own design so anyways the sc designs have been around for decades they work well they serve their purpose very well and uh, you'd be hard pressed honestly to find a better knife for around the 150 to like 120 dollar margin like you'd genuinely be hard pressed to find something that would perform better than this um, anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed the video as always god bless and i'm out